Hi guys, welcome to my channel Lush Gardener. I hope you guys are fine and are safe. So today I have a very beautiful succulent called as Echeveria Blue Sky. Now this succulent belongs to uh, the family of Echeveria Imbricata. As I've spoken about this earlier as well, we have Echeveria Elegans and then it is further divided with Echeveria Elegans, Mexican Snowball, Echeveria Elegans, Onslow, Echeveria Elegans, uh, Violet Queen. So just like that uh, we have uh, Echeveria Imbricata and then you have Echeveria Blue Sky, you have Echeveria Blue Rose, you have uh, Echeveria I think there is a white rose as well if I'm not wrong. So these are all the succulents under uh, the division of uh, Echeveria Imbricata. So uh, Echeveria Blue Sky is absolutely beautiful. Uh, it is a very vibrant color succulent uh, as you can see. Uh, you can give it a good amount of morning direct sunlight for 5 to 6 hours after acclimating it. Only then you will be able to see the colors. If you are going to keep it in indirect bright light, uh, the succulent will be compact. It is going to have very minimum color. But if you want to have that intense color, then you will have to expose it to morning direct sunlight for 5 to 6 hours after acclimating it. Now guys remember uh, this, uh, all the uh, succulents under the uh, uh, family of Imbricata, Echeveria Imbricata, they have very broad and uh, very thin leaves. So you need to understand that you cannot overwater them, you cannot underwater them excessively. Uh, you will have to have a balance uh, because if you're going to water excessively, then they are going to have edema. So I would say that these are the type of plants that easily get edema because they have very thin leaves. And when you tend to push in a lot of water, the cells inside those leaves, they tend to burst and you get those bumps on the leaves. It's very common with uh, this variety with the with blue sky, with the blue rose, with the I think white rose as well. I'm not very sure. I'll have to check about white rose, but there is one succulent as called as white rose and imbricata. So all of these succulents, uh, edema is very common because uh, when we tend to have an improper uh, watering schedule or we do not have a proper watering schedule, edema tends to appear. A lot of times it will still come on the succulents, which is very normal. Uh, there is nothing to be worried about edema. It is not a fungus. It is not a mold. It is just uh, that the cells inside the leaves, they tend to burst so and it tends to give a very uh, bumpy appearance for the succulent so you need to understand that uh, this variety of succulents they have very thin leaves so if you're going to overwater them uh, they cannot store a lot of water which means that the soil is uh, going to stay moist uh, they are not going to absorb a lot of water and if you're going to keep them underwater for a very long time they are going to lose water and they can easily get dehydrated so that is the only uh, thing with uh, imbricata so you need to be uh, very precise uh, with watering with amount of sunlight because if you're going to put them out in direct sunlight without acclimating it they can easily get burnt and if you're going to keep them underwatered, they can easily get dehydrated. So you have to be extremely careful when you're dealing with uh, these varieties of succulents that have very thin leaves. Now talking about Imbricata, all of the succulents are under this uh, family. They do get affected with mealybugs. So you have to do a watch. Uh, a lot of these uh, succulents do have farina. Some of them do not have farina. Some do have farina. So you have to be extremely careful that you do not touch the leaves. Always uh, you can, you know, if you want to do any kind of repotting, just hold the succulent from beneath or if you are uh, cleaning the succulent, always use a blower but do not touch a brush and do not use any kind of uh, cloth to wipe off the leaves, especially if there is dust, you can always use a blower. But still, to be on the safer side, I would still say do not use a soft bristled makeup brush. It can disturb the farina. It's always better to just blow it off. Uh, with the help of a blower that will get rid of the dust. Water does not usually settle on succulents that have farina because it tends to turn into uh, uh, you know a water droplet like how you might have seen in my other videos as well because farina because farina itself is like a waxy coating so the water does not uh, basically stay on it. It basically makes the leaf waterproof so the water droplets just roll off and fall down into the soil so it's not much of an issue. It's only that if you tend to see any uh, dust or any mud or any pebbles that tend to fall in between the leaves you can always use a blower to clean it off do not use a brush uh, a lot of times the farina does get damaged with the brush as well and insecticides please do not spray neem oil please do not use any fungicides because a lot of these fungicides do have oil in them they will disturb the farina it is going to completely spoil the look of your succulent so please don't do that uh, you can use cinnamon powder you can just uh, you know blow off uh, the uh, 
melee bugs because a lot of times the because of farina the melee bugs do not attack a lot of succulents because it becomes a little difficult for the melee bugs to attach themselves as, because as we have spoken about this earlier as well uh, farina is not only acts like a sunscreen but it also helps the succulent fight against any kind of mold fungus or even for that matter pests so it's very simple to propagate them because they belong to the echuaria family you can uh, propagate them via leaves you can do a stem cutting you can separate the offsets uh, but i would say stem cutting and separating of the offsets is much faster as compared to leaf propagation so it's up to you you can do any one method they go dormant during the winters and summer is their growing period so if you are a person who tends to add any fertilizers please don't do it during the winters you can do it during the summers you can hold on to your a uh, fertilizer spray or fertilizer can whichever is available with you wait until summers do not do anything right now and the soil as usual the soil has to be loose porous and well draining ensure that if you are a beginner go for a pot with the drain hole it is going to make your life easy so guys that's all about this beautiful variety of succulent i hope that this video was helpful to you if it was please hit the like button and if you're new to my channel please consider subscribing to it until then take care stay safe and keep propagating